Good day, everybody. It's Nick Dingle here again for the third part of our Pong videos. If you didn't get the first two videos, they're down in the description. Please go follow them if you have not finished. However, for this particular video, we're going to set up our left and our right paddles, get them working, and we'll get the scoreboard for each player. So the first thing that we really need to do is set up some collisions on these bad boys, because right now we can have the ball go straight through them. No collision, no bouncing, whatever. So the one thing that we need to do is add some behaviors to these guys. So let's click on the left paddle. Let's click behaviors, press the plus, and add in physics. Now, you might think, oh, I want solid, because if you read the description, it says makes the object impassable so other objects cannot move or fall through them. Solid only works for different kinds of movement. So if you're using a bullet, if you're using platform, eight direction, custom movement, then solid would work just fine. Physics ignores all solid objects it will only interact with other physics objects. So we're gonna to have to use another physics behavior, add, and let's set him to immovable, yes. Friction, no. Elasticity, yes. And there you go, that's our left hand paddle set up for collisions, but a little bit boring because we can't control the paddle yet. Yes, the ball's gonna run into it and bounce off, that's all well and good, but how do we actually set it up so the paddle can be moved up and down? What we need to do now is insert another kind of object. I'm just going to double click on my layout. And if I go down, you've got input objects here. You can either have a gamepad controller, which don't work the best in Construct. I'm sorry for those people who want to use controllers. Uh, the keyboard is the one we're going to use for this particular one. We're going to use W and S to go up and down with the left player. And we're going to use up and down to move the right player. The good thing about the, these objects is you only insert them in your game once. You don't insert them for each player. You don't insert them for each project. You just insert the objects once. So don't even give it a name. Just click insert. And it says added keyboard. This is object is available to the entire project. So as I said, you add the keyboard once. You can even see there's no properties to the keyboard. It's just set up, ready to go. And now what I can do is start adding keyboard events to my event sheet. Without that keyboard, there'd be no coding in my event sheet for it. So let's do the obvious thing and add an event. And this time we're going to select keyboard. You can see he appears here now. And these are all the different events for keyboards. So when a key code is down, if you know what key codes are, that's great. Okay, but come down, there's key is down on any key pressed, on key released. We're going to go with this one on key pressed. So when they press the W key, we're going to do stuff. But what we actually, we're not going to use on key pressed, are we? Because that's just dumb. What we are going to do is we're going to use on key down because on key pressed only happens once when you press the key, it triggers. On key down will hold, happen all the time while the key is held down. And we want the, we want the paddle to continually move up if they're holding the key down. So let's select key down, sorry. Go next, and then we have to choose what key it is. So I'm going to go press W on this screen, and then click the OK key. And there it is. It says the key W is down. How easy is that? The action. So the action is we're going to move the green paddle upwards. So let's go add action. The action is going to be the left paddle. Okay. What are we going to choose here? There are so many things that we could choose from. The one we are going to use is move at angle. Okay. Next. And basically, what's the angle going to be? If you remembered what I said in the last video, right is 0, down is 90, left is 180, up is 270. I want to move up at that angle. Distance, let's, that's in pixels, so pretty small increments. So if you leave it at 1, it's going to move very slowly. So let's try distance 10. So while W is down, it's going to move up 10 pixels. Now, we obviously want to add the, um, the opposite to that move down. So we're going to copy this whole event. So selecting and copying events is a little bit awkward, but what you do is you click on this little bar, this tiny bar next to the keyboard icon. Click on that and it selects everything about the event and the actions. And then you can copy and then you can paste up there. Now obviously I don't want to leave this as W and up. I'm going to double click on this event to edit it. I'm going to change this to S. So again, what I did was double click on the event to bring that back up. I clicked on the key and changed it to S. Double click on the action again. To move down, we need 90 degrees. All right. 
we obviously need to test all this out. Let's click play and let's try W and S to move up and down. Ha! Ah, take that, red guy. How easy is that? Okay. The one last little problem we're going to have is our paddles can go, wee! They can go off the bloody screen. So we're actually going to bring in that behavior I removed from the ball the other time. Whoop, let me just close that. Let's go back to our level one. Click on your paddle. Add a behavior. And let's click on bound to layer. So that means this cheeky bugger can't leave. All right, I'm actually going to stop the video. I'm going to ask you to set up your red paddle the exact same way we set up the left one. So with the physics, make sure you've got the physics property set up, add your scripting, and add the bound to layout to Mr. Red. And then we can start playing some things. Just remember to change the keys to up and down on the keyboard. So I'll see you soon, everybody. Okay, everybody, I hope you got your right paddle set up. To give it a good test, press play. Make sure you can control the both of them. And now you can play yourself in a game pong if you haven't got a friend. That's a bit sad, isn't it? Anyway, that's ready to go. That's done. So the next thing we really need to do is set up some scoring for these guys. So I want to insert what's called a text box. And this text box is just going to contain a number for each player. So if you double click, let's click on text. And I'm going to call this one uh, left score. Press enter. Click there. And let's set this bad boy up. So there's a couple of things I want to do to him. So the first thing is change his text. So down here, it says text. Type in zero and press enter. All right. Next thing I want to do is I want to resize and set the text. So where is this horizontal error? To center. And that way the number appears in the middle of that part. And I can pop him in the top left-hand corner of the screen. All right. You may be very, very tempted to copy this guy and put him over the other side, but you can't. We have to have another separate text box for the right-hand player. And there's one more way that we can do this. Because he's going to be the exact same as left score, but I don't want him to be the exact same, I'm going to come up here on object types, and I'm going to right-click on left score and click clone. And you can see it already makes another one. But let's rename him and call him. So the way I did that, right-click on the name, click rename, right score. Drag him in, and let's set him up, resize him, zero, center. All right, looking good. Okay, we've got our two scores set up, ready to go. No one's going to score anything, though. So what I want you to think about is when a player is going to score a point. So the right-hand player is going to score a point when the ball goes through the left-hand side of the level. The left player is going to score a point when it goes through the right hand side okay so this guy knocks it this guy gets a point okay so what we need we actually need some extra sprites on the edges on the left and the right which are going to be what the ball runs into to trigger a score point so quickly double click on your board click sprite and let's call this guy uh, right player score points all right, so remember, let's give it a very hideous color. Let's go. Yep, that's pretty bad. Poo brown. Baby poo brown. So the right player's score point, he scores a point when it goes to the left side. So what I'm going to do is put it over the left side here. Again, resize it and put it just on the edge so we can't see it. And I suggest you make sure it covers the entire thing. All right, do that again. Let's clone him. Let's rename him. Left player score points. Invalid characters. I must have accidentally mashed it. So left player score point is on this side. Just there. All right. So we are ready to get scripting. We need to set these bad boys up. I'm just going to do it for the left hand player. So I'm going to program this left hand score point and this left score point text box so let's go to event sheets let's click on add event now the event's going to be when the ball collides with the left player's score point so ball next let's just type in here collides with another object next what's the object it is the left player score point go done 
So when the ball collides with the left player score point, what do we want to do? What are the actions? There's actually a fair few actions. First thing is we're going to increase the left score by one. So left score. Okay, this is actually really annoying because there's not, you can go add two, but that's not actually what we're looking for. We need to set the text. Okay, there it is, set text. Okay, what do we want to set the text to? This one's really tricky. I could go one and go okay. Problem is, is every time the left player scores, it's going to set that text box to one. It's not going to increase it, it's just going to set it to one. So I need to add one. So putting plus one, we get an error. Well, what do you want to add on to? You want to take what their score is and you want to add one. So where's the current score? Okay, that's probably the trickiest part. The current score is held inside left score. So let's type in left score, like so, dot text. And that's where it's held inside of. So the current score plus one. Press done. Unfortunately, it still does not work. Okay, the way to get this to work, okay, is to put on the front of left score, you put INT, open a bracket, and put it on the other side of dot text. So plus one is outside that. So set text to int plus one. So what int does is it converts the text box's text into a number. Int is short for integer. If you know your maths, integer is a whole number. Okay, so that's what that does. It looks pretty complicated, but that's all it is. The next thing is we need to reset the ball. We need to put the ball back in the middle. We need to restart it up. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to destroy the ball. So the action is ball, destroy. Ball's gone. Next thing we need to do is create the ball back in the middle. So I want you to go to add action, system, and then create. So I'm just going to type that in the top. We got create object. And you've got all these different properties. Okay, what do you want to create? Where do you want to create? What's going on? So what you're going to do, what object do we want to create? We want to create the ball. Layer, don't stress about that. X, where on the X coordinate, left and right, do you want to spawn them? I want to spawn them in the middle. And my whole layout is 640 wide. So half of 640, 320. Same for the height. The height is 480. Half of 480 is 240. Click OK. That's going to spawn the ball smack bang in the middle of the screen. What it's not going to do is send it hurtling off in a random direction. So I'm simply going to add in the same. Well, I'm going to actually, let's just copy that. Let's copy paste. Just make sure that that is underneath your create object. Otherwise, there will be no ball to add physics to. And guess what? That's the left hand score done. Every time the left hand guy scores a point, he's going to get it. Update his text box. Whoop, let's lose a point. There it is. Whoop, two, and so forth. All right. I'm now leaving it up to you to set up the right hand player score point and their, their scoring panel. So I am going to see you very, very soon in the next video to polish this up and set you a few challenges. See you then, everyone.